Yo, what's going on guys? We're back with episode five of Baloney Basketball. As you know, I'm here with my co-host Johnny. Say what's up, Johnny. What's going on? How's it going? Uh, it's going pretty good for me. Hopefully it's going good for you guys as well. And uh, as you guys know, we're going to be talking about some more basketball. So we're going to get into starting with some game recaps before we get to the, like some of the bigger storylines. Um, the first one was the Utah Jazz played the Milwaukee Bucks uh, over the past week. And Bojan Bogdanovich hit a crazy game winner. Um, on the season, he's averaging over 21 points a game, which... I mean, that's a career high for him. So what do you think he can bring to the Jazz this year? Well, he's, he's always been a big-time player. He uh, produces when they need him to. Um, I just remember him on Indiana, right, that series against the Cavs when LeBron was still on the Cavs. He's, he's not afraid. He's not afraid to go out there, show what he can do, hits big shots, good defender. You know, he's kind of underrated. He's not uh, He's not a LeBron stopper. Really, nobody is. Yeah. But he's a high-end defender. He's a high-end defender, and that's just what they need. Yeah, and I think he really proved it uh, once Oladipo got hurt last year because I'm pretty sure he was averaging, like, 20 points per game from that point on in the end of the season. Um, so, I mean, yeah, he's a huge plus to them. They've kind of needed some shooting because, I mean, outside of Joe Ingles, they've kind of lacked, like, a – a three or a four that could really like stretch the floor so yeah, I, he, oh go ahead so i was just gonna say he's he fits utah style in that they're not a super fast-paced team and he's not always looking to push but what he can do is he hits big shots he can shoot which they need and he's a great defender so he's just kind of exactly what he's like a quinn snyder type player right and i mean there's some players that uh it's harder for them to like adjust to certain roles but i feel like he's kind of always been that uh he was that with the Nets, the Wizards as well, the short time he was there. But, uh, yeah, he's kind of always been, uh, like, kind of a guy that you'd want on, like, almost any team. Yeah, if I was building a team, it's not a guy that I'm going to shy away from. It's a guy I'm going to look to go get. And if somebody said, hey, you can have uh, Boyan Bogdanovich, it's not like I'm going to be like, no, I don't want him. Like, he does it all. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, but that was not the only game winner because, actually, uh, this guy had two game winners, one against the Sixers and another against the Timberwolves, and that is Nikola Jokic. Now, Jokic, he's kind of gotten off to a slow start uh, at the start of the year, but uh, it looks like he's at least trying to, like, pick up some of his slack. So uh, what do you think of Jokic and the Nuggets so far? Yeah, Jokic saw Bogdanovich hit that one and said, hey, I'll one-up you. Watch this. He hit two. Um I still don't think he's been assertive enough. Um, in order for me to take this Nuggets team serious, he needs to be that guy. He needs to be demanding the ball. Because even if he's not scoring, he's still the best playmaker on the team by a mile. Like, he needs the ball in his hand. And I just think he's I think he's been too laid back for this team. Um, they really need him to go out and get, and get his, and then the rest of the team will follow his suit. Yeah, I feel like he's been too reliant, like, on uh... – Jamal Murray and stuff but uh I think honestly I mean yeah Jokic has kind of been like too shy in the sense that like he's not taking uh the amount of shots that you'd like him to but I feel like also kind of Gary Harris is kind of getting that kind of deal because if you remember like he was I think an 18 point per game scorer like two years ago and then last year he had injuries so it allowed Jamal Murray to kind of step up and I mean I feel like ever since then he's kind of just been like in the role playing spot of a shooting guard but he can really like produce a lot if he's given the opportunity. Yeah, yep, I agree with that. And my issue with Jokic isn't necessarily the the shot attempts, but it's more of just I want him to be the one making plays. I want him to be facilitating because Jamal Murray is more of a scoring point guard, and Gary Harris isn't necessarily a playmaker either, but that's right up Jokic's alley. Yeah, I agree. Uh, play, play him through the high post, play him through the low post, but just get the ball in his hand and then let him make some plays. Yeah, and I'm, I mean, also, like, in the pick-and-pop game, too, uh, it looks like sometimes he's kind of trying to be, like, too passive. Like, he'll get it at the top of the key, and then he'll just, like, shot fake, and he'll be like, all right, let me look for Gary Harris or, like, Torrey Craig or someone else on the wing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, moving on, though, uh, even though Jokic has had a bad start to the year, uh, this guy has had a pretty good start to the year, actually. Uh, Andrew Wiggins. Um he played three games since our last episode. He played the Warriors. Uh, 
the Nuggets, and the Pistons, all of which he played pretty well. Now, I know they lost against the uh, Nuggets, but uh, it was still – he's been playing pretty good. What do you think of Andrew Wiggins, and do you think if he's playing this well that the Timberwolves have a chance of making the playoffs? Well, the West, the bottom of that West, uh, we thought it was going to be super competitive. Um, it may be super competitive, but I just don't see a clear-cut team – like taking that seven and eight seed, so I don't see why they couldn't make the playoffs. Covington's been playing well, uh, well too. Um, with Wiggins, listen, it's great to see everybody wrote him off after two years. Uh, I didn't think he was playing well. I love what he's doing. He's aggressive. He's not afraid to take big shots. The one thing um, that I'm not buying is I don't want to see him taking more shots than Cat. Like Carl Anthony Towns still needs to be taking the most shots on the team, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he, it's hard to really, like, say after, like, 10 games or so that a certain player can, like, get to that point where he's, like, above everyone else on his team, especially a player like Carl Anthony Towns. But, um, I mean, I, I will admit that I, I didn't think Andrew Wiggins would play this well this season. Uh, I actually made a bold claim. Uh, I think it was in the middle of his rookie year. I said that Andrew Wiggins would never be an all-star. Uh, this looks like his best chance, assuming the Timberwolves keep winning, this is probably his best chance so far of making the All-Star team. So he would he yeah. would kind of make me eat my words there. Uh, what were you going to say? Yeah, well, I was just going to say, you know, Clay's injured, Curry's injured, so that wipes two out right there. Chris Paul isn't really having a great season. Um, so it's certainly viable. Um, you're probably going to get first-time All-Stars in the West. Like, uh, I don't think Devin Booker's been an All-Star yet. Um, it's going to be competitive, but I am 100% in agreement with you uh, that this is going to be his best shot to do it. If he wants to be an all-star, this is the year he's got to do it. it. It all just depends on the team, though. I mean, I think, honestly, right now where they're at, I don't think he gets the nod. He'll be, like, kind of really close. But um, you got to also take into consideration, though, the hype that, like, he has. Like, I know a lot of people, like, kind of gave up on him, but I feel like a lot more people are kind of starting to recognize it more because of the hype that he originally had. So, uh, yeah, it's going for, it's going from like bust to, to possible all-star. Yeah. I mean, it's we, just a big storyline. We know that like with Derrick Rose, <laughs> like, I mean, everyone yeah. kind of like wrote him off and then now everyone loves D Rose and stuff, but, uh, exactly. yeah. So we'll see what Wiggins can keep on doing. Uh, but as of late, he's looked pretty good. Uh, and we did just mention D Rose, obviously from Chicago. But uh, there's this new Chicago kid, point guard, Kobe White, who had seven three-pointers in the fourth quarter. Now, granted, it was against the Knicks, but that's that's still insane. Like, seven threes in a quarter. I'm pretty sure that's, that's the most ever by a rookie in a quarter, and that's also – he was the youngest to ever hit seven threes, I think, in a fourth quarter. So uh, what do you think that says, like, kind of about his potential – and when do you think Jim Boylan will finally realize to put him in the starting lineup? After he's fired. <laughs> that, 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 that sounds good enough. I mean, I think it's uh, I think it's the Roy Williams effect being in attendance. Um, but no, I think um, really more than anything, Kobe White. This is how he's going to be all year. He's gonna he's gonna be hot and cold. He's gonna have these big games. He's gonna have these stretches where he looks like a rookie. Um, but having a coach like Jim Boylan just doesn't boost your confidence at all. It does the opposite. Like, players can't really gain confidence under him. So um, we'll see what happens. Like I said, he's going to have these games where he goes off and just hits a ton of shots because he's a, he's a scorer. That's what he is. It's kind of insane because I'm going to check what the score is real quick of this one game. But I said if the Bulls, because the Bulls right now are playing the Bucks. I said if the Bulls. Yeah, they're losing by five. Okay, they're down five. Uh, yeah. I said if the Bulls win this game, because they were winning for most of it, uh, they'll be the seventh seed, like, at the moment, which is kind of insane, because, like, they've really had an, a horrible start to the season. Like, the fact that, like, they could bo boost up into the playoff picture after everything horrible they've done is kind of insane. And I think if, if Kobe White keeps, like, elevating his game, then, uh, you know, if Otto Porter kind of picks it up, if Markinen starts shooting better, like... And I guess they're still in it. I mean, I'm just kind of upset with, like, how the team is going all around, though. Yeah, it's a lot of dysfunction. It's nothing new. Um, until either, until the front office figures it out, 
like this is just what it's going to be like we just got to live with it yeah i agree um moving on though uh, a few players made their uh return like their debut for the season uh, one of them being blake griffin uh, who returned for the Pistons, had 19 points, seven rebounds, six assists against the Timberwolves. Um, do you think it was a good sign or a bad sign like for the Pistons with Blake Griffin against the Timberwolves? Because the Timberwolves did win the game, and it looked like they were taking control of it. Uh, what, what, what are your thoughts just on that game, though? Uh, more of my thoughts are going to be on like a holistic view, just that this Pistons team... I can never really take them serious. Luke Kennard's playing better, but they have four players and then a bunch of, like, nobodies outside of uh, Rose, uh, Kennard, and then Griffin Drummond. I don't really see much on that squad. Yeah, what I uh, took from it is that I think Dwayne Casey really needs to fix his rotations because he started Rose, Kennard, Blake, and Andre Drummond all um, – all on that game so what does that leave for your bench that's almost like what Markeith Morris and Langston Galloway like that's not going to cut it on the bench I think you need someone to come off the bench regardless you know like if you look at I mean when Rose and Kennard both came off the bench uh the first few games of the season they looked really good so I don't really understand I mean I know it's just for the time being for at least Rose's case because Reggie Jackson is going to be back in about a month or so but I think they kind of need wins now because, I mean, they're four and eight, which is not good. So, uh, yeah. So they kind of. Oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, like, I feel like they need to space them out a little bit more because, I mean, it's not like they were playing bad. Like, when all four of them were on the court together, they were winning. But then once, like, they took everyone out, I think they left Kennard in, but, like, they took the other three out and they were just getting hammered. So. Yeah, they need to. Uh, he needs to. This- use some staggering with his rotations. Um, I'd like to see, I'm trying to think the the best way to do it. Um, either one of Griffin and Drummond plus one of Rose and Kennard at the moment should at least be on the court at all times. And you can, you can start them and then you can just pull Rose after six minutes or whatever, let Kennard play the whole first quarter, something like that. And then come the end of the game time, like you can close with all four. Yeah, well, that was another thing, too. He didn't put uh, Blake or Rose in. He didn't put Rose in at all to end the game. He, he didn't put Blake in until about, what, like three minutes? And I know, like, part of that is because, yeah. like, he's just coming back. But, I mean, it, this is a game that they really could have won because they played the Heat the next day, and the Heat are a tough team. And, I mean, they lost that as well. And both, like, Griffin and Rose didn't play anyway. So you might as well just, like, try and use them up, get the win against Minnesota, like, if you can. Yeah, uh, I totally agree with that. Uh, moving on, though, because Blake Griffin wasn't the only one who made a return. Uh, actually, Paul George is in the midst of his return right now, uh, where the game's tied at 99. Uh, they are currently playing the Pelicans. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I know we kind of touched on this a little bit last week, but uh, what do you think, I mean, do we still have the same – thoughts about like the Clippers kind of being a powerhouse in the West because I know they've kind of like lost certain games so what do we think of the Clippers when Paul George Kawhi Leonard Pat Beverly all those guys are out there Lou Williams and stuff I'm still I'm still buying them um slow start offensively strong start defensively um as long as they have the defense figured out now they're fine um because this team can get hot. Listen, you got you got three guys on the team who could all be considered closers between Pat Bev, uh, Paul George, and Kawhi. So they have the offensive firepower to do so, and it's just a good sign that the defense is where it is at this moment. Yeah, I just pulled up uh, George's stats. He has 26 points, 6 rebounds, 3 assists, and 17 minutes, which that's just insane. Also, Rodney Magruder has 16 points, which... I mean, as I speak, they've already given up 101 to the Pelicans at the start of the fourth, so that's not a great look defensively, (laughs) but uh, they're still honed in. They'll be fine. I'm not too worried. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to watch uh, George and Kawhi kind of together because I feel like that's kind of the big uh, prize in watching Clippers games this year. Yeah, and Kawhi, 
Kawhi knows how to play with other people. Like, that's not really an issue for him. So I don't see much of a chemistry slash meshing issue. Yeah, I agree. Um, moving on to our next topic, uh, someone, and by someone I mean David Fisdale, the Knicks coach, uh, there's rumors about he's likely to be like gone. They're likely to part ways with him. They're basically kind of blaming the start of the season on him solely. Uh, do you think that's fair or not fair, and why? He like he hasn't been a great coach, but he was also dealt a terrible hand of cards. Front office hasn't put him in a position to succeed, and this is how I always view this pro sports in general. Like when a general manager fails to, um, when general manager fails to give his coach a good team. Instead of the general manager looking themselves in the mirror and saying they did a bad job, they just fire the head coach. And that's kind of what I see happening here. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, like, the big talk was that, like, they basically signed, like, three or four power forwards in the offseason. But uh, I didn't really actually look at their, like, full roster, like, all the bench players as well until, like, today. And just by looking at, like, what he has to work with, like, it's kind of hard to put, like, a lot of the blame on him. Um, I think part of that is just Knicks fans kind of being crazy as well. So, um, yeah, that's kind of just my take on that. Yep, no disagreements. Uh, now we got some injury issues. Uh, first one, probably the least severe of all these, but uh, Anthony Davis, uh, he missed yesterday's game against the Golden State Warriors uh, due to an injury, and I guess like he's had like – lingering like shoulder issues and stuff as well um is that a huge concern and i mean or do you think it's a concern at this point i'd say uh stop me if you've heard this before anthony davis has an injury this is like (laughs) we we see this every single year um i don't want to necessarily diagnose him and consider consider the injury itself serious but with Davis and how injury ridden he is, like I don't know how you don't take this serious. This Lakers team without Davis wouldn't go anywhere in the playoffs. And um, like when it comes down to it, they're playing the long game, right? They're playing for May. They're playing for June. So he needs to make sure he's healthy come playoffs, and that's really all that matters. Yeah, I mean, like without Anthony Davis, like last year, I know it's a different team, but uh, like they were like what twenty eight and twenty seven. At least that's what Skip Bayless always mm-hmm. says. Uh, with just LeBron but I mean obviously they have better role players but I don't think that's that would be even enough to you know obviously win a championship but uh yeah I'm pretty sure Anthony Davis it was either 65 or 70 games he's only played more than that amount twice and he's been in the league for seven years which is not really a great sign um yeah it just feels like he's always dealing with some sort of injury and they're going to need him healthy if they want to win games Yep. Uh, moving on to another injury, uh, a broken hand. And this one kind of sucks because we literally just talked about him uh, in one of our recent episodes. But uh, Gordon Hayward is now out six weeks due to a broken hand. So uh, how bad do you think that is for, like, well, just Hayward in general? And then do you think it really affects the Celtics? Because, I mean, they won their most recent game uh, without Hayward, so... What do you think? I mean, it's it sucks. You got to feel for the guy. Just getting back to where he used to be, getting back to that level, and then boom, dealt with this injury. Um, I love the way the Celtics are playing just because they're not relying on one guy. Right? It's Kemba. It's Tatum. Jalen Brown's picking up some slack. Marcus Smart is playing well. They have, they have pieces. Um, but Hayward was arguably their second best player before he got injured, so I don't think that we I don't think like we can say that there's no impact at all with him missing time. Like it's a big void for them to fill. Yeah, but I will say like I mean obviously you don't think anything's good from an injury, but I mean at least the fact that like he didn't injure like his leg or something or his knee, so he can obviously like still stay in condition. Uh, so like by the six week mark, he should be kind of like in game shape, ready to play and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it just really kind of sucks. At least it's not like a season-ending injury because, uh, you know, you don't want to have him go through that again and then say next year he has a slow year again. 
Um, but yeah, hopefully he comes back and he's playing just as well as uh, he started the season. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Uh, and yet another injury, this time with the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, Karis LeVert has a thumb injury. Uh, it was around this time last year. I'm pretty sure that he uh, had that ne gruesome injury or whatever. Uh, and he missed like almost the rest of the season. And then he came back just before the playoffs. Uh, and the Nets, they just signed Iman Shumpert. Uh, kind of to fill a void at least uh, while LeVert's going to be injured. So um, what do you think is this... Do you think, how big of a problem do you say this is for the Nets at this point? Because they're not really looking that great themselves. And do you think Iman Shumpert can do anything to fix that? I mean, Shumpert will help them out for a bit, but they're kind of a depleted team. They don't have much depth. Um, already not playing well. Kyrie Irving effect. Couldn't putting up the stats. Can't win games. This team's kind of got some turmoil. Um, don't really know where they go from here. Yeah, um, I don't have the stats in front of me, but it feels like they've given up a lot of points in most of their games. So uh, Wouldn't surprise me. At, I mean, <laughs> at least Iman Shumpert, like, he's known for being a pretty solid defender. Uh, he can hit, like, the catch-and-shoot three, so maybe he can help him on the defensive end, but uh, it just sucks to lose a guy like Levert because then it just puts more on Kyrie's shoulders. And, uh, you know, it requires other people to, like, step up, like, uh, Joe Harris, uh, like Jared Allen's going to have to get more involved in the offense. So it kind of like asks a lot more from everyone else when a star player like that goes down. Yeah. Um, on the opposite side of an injury, someone that was already injured though, uh, and it's talking about when he could potentially come back. Uh, Stephen Curry of the Golden State Warriors said he wants to come back this season. He doesn't want to sit out like the rest of the year and just like forget this season. He wants to come back sometime this season. Uh, do you think that's a good move for him or a bad move? Uh, and do you think he actually will come back this season? It's the right thing for him to say. I don't think he's going to come back. Tank this season, get a good pick, come back next season fully healthy. You'll get a fully healthy clay. Um, don't know what kind of moves they plan on making with D'Lo, with Draymond Green, but come back healthy for next season. Um, and maybe come back, if you're going to come back and play, maybe a little, but like, don't, don't push yourself to come back just to play this season. Uh, Cause next year, next year you're going to have a, you're going to have like a, a revenge tour, I guess. Yeah. I think it's best for him to not come back. Uh, obviously everyone saw what happened with LeBron when LeBron came back with the Lakers and then they ended up not making the playoffs. Like people basically were saying like washed King, and, you know, saying, like, Kawhi is, like, now the best player in the league. Like, at least the majority of people were saying. So, I don't know if Stephen Curry would want to come back and then people look at him different. Like, he's no longer the best point guard in the league. Uh, he can't lead a team anywhere. Because uh, that Warriors team is not really good. So, he, I think he should just come back to start it next season. Yeah, I don't, I don't see any reason for him to come back, really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Moving on to our next topic, uh, this isn't really like an injury, but it's kind of like a, a serious issue, I guess. Uh, Dion Waiters' gummy overdose uh, is, what, is what they said. Um, I mean, I'll just ask you this right now. Is his time with the Heat done? Yeah, <laughs> but more than anything, I just want to make sure he's okay. He needs to get the help he needs. Um, this is a bigger than basketball type issue, um, but if we kind of restrict it to just basketball terms itself, I don't see how he ever steps on the court in the Heat uniform again. His time in the NBA might be up. Who knows? Yeah, uh, it's really hard. I mean, you, nev you never know. There, there are so many people that are just looking for a shot, and when you see a guy like Deion Waiters and with his off-court antics, like – is it really worth the risk? And it just doesn't seem like it is at this point in time. Yeah, there's been many players throughout history that have had just issues where it's like, you know, one like severe like health issue or, you know, like doing something like not a league, like not legal for the league. And it just completely like nobody's going to sign him again. Like look at OJ Mayo, uh, you know, he got banned and he tried to make a comeback. Nobody even like hardly gave interest in him and 
he's still not in the league. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be really – he's got a huge question mark by his career. And, uh, yeah, I don't think he's playing with the Heat ever again. Yeah, I can't I, – I just can't see it. Uh, I can't in any way. So, our next topic is more team-related. Uh, a specific team that uh, beat the Lakers over the past week um, without Kyle Lowry, without – uh, Serge Ibaka and OG Ananobi also got hurt early in the game, which is unfortunate for them as well. Uh, but the Toronto Raptors, um, they're having a really good start to the season. So do we think this team is still a legitimate contender in the Eastern Conference? Or are they kind of like a tier below that? Oh, no, they're a contender in the Eastern Conference. I, I'm not sold on Philly or Boston at this moment. Um, Siakam is crushing it. Um, Fred Van Vliet, I like to call him Fred Van Elite, um, <laughs> been balling. Kyle Lowry can still play. Serge Ibaka's hurt. Let Mark Gasol just get his feet under him. These injuries have allowed guys like Terrence Davis to come into the equation. Chris Boucher, OG Ananobi's playing well. Um, Rondé Hollis Jefferson's getting some minutes. So I think. Um, they've been playing the top guys a lot of minutes like Lowry, Van Vliet and Siakam before the injury at least has been getting have been getting around 40 minutes and so I don't know what that wear and tear will do to them in the regular season but I'm taking them serious yeah and also uh, Matt Thomas he's been pretty good too he's been a pretty good shooter for them but yeah I think I think the top six because there's a huge gap between six and seventh right now in the east but I think the top six teams in the East are all legit, which are like the Sixers, Bucks, Celtics, uh, Raptors, Heat, and the Pacers. I think they're all legit teams. Now, as for like the other two spots in the East, I think the Pistons, because they have everyone healthy, they'll most likely get in there. And then also like, I mean, the Nets have talent. It's just a matter of health. And then you got teams like the Hawks and Bulls and stuff. So I think they're, it's almost like a six team race, you know, because the Heat haven't looked bad either. So I say that the Raptors and the Heat both are kind of in that mix with teams like the Celtics and with the Bucks and Sixers. I feel like they haven't started the season off as good as people thought. Yeah, I think I would take. I think I'd take the Raptors over the Heat, though. Yeah, well, yeah, I probably would too. I'm just saying that the Heat are definitely up there. Uh, and I mean, who knows? Like, uh, even going back to like the Sixers and the Bucks and stuff. We haven't even seen a healthy Indiana Pacers because they're still missing Miles Turner, I believe. And, I mean, obviously Victor Oladipo is still hurt. So if they can get, like, all their chemistry issues together, like, they're going to be really scary as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that, that's for sure. I've always, I've always been a fan of Indiana come playoff time. Yeah. And uh, actually another team that made the playoffs last year, though, that – I can't believe I forgot to mention them, though. But, uh, and also a former Raptor, uh, both kind of linked recently. Uh, and now it's trade rumors of DeMar DeRozan possibly going to the Orlando Magic. Um, what do you think that would do for the Magic? And do you think that would mean that the Spurs' playoff streak comes to an end? Or are we still believers in the Spurs? I, with the way the West is shaking out right now, I'm not going to count the Spurs out. In regards to the Magic... They need a shooter. DeMar DeRozan hasn't even attempted a three, I don't think, yet this season. Like, that's not going to solve their issues right now. They have guys that can hit mid-range. Like, I know Isaac's not a great mid-range shooter, but he can hit the mid-range. So stuff like that, um, I don't think DeRozan is the guy they need. Yeah, uh, from a perspective of, like, their team needs, I don't think it really makes sense either. Um now in the sense that they need scoring because, I mean, they kind of do. Like, Vucevic isn't having a good start to the season. Neither is Aaron Gordon. Um, so I feel like they kind of do need somebody that can actually, like, score the ball. That they can – I mean, DeRozan doesn't have a reputation for being great down the stretch. But, I mean, at least they can give him the ball, like, in late games. I know he's played pretty well in those certain situations so far this year. But, um, yeah, yeah I mean, it would be – 
cool though, just because like it's more shake up in the league. I mean, if you're obviously if you're not a fan of the either player that's or either team that's involved in the trade, like you're most likely gonna think like, oh, that's cool, unless it's like uh, Kevin Durant signing with the Warriors or you know like the Celtics trading to get like Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett or something like that, because then it just like kind of puts like so much star power on one team. Yeah. Yep. I uh. No disagreements there. Uh, and moving on to our last topic before we get to the daily picks. Um, it just happened, actually. Just happened about an hour and a half ago. Uh, Carmelo Anthony is back. He is back in the NBA. Uh, signed a non-guaranteed deal, but regardless, still a contract. Mm-hmm. With the Portland Trailblazers. Uh now the Blazers, they're struggling as of right now. They just lost again uh, yesterday. They're like four and eight at the moment, which isn't good at all. And they thought, hey, like we need something to spice it up. So they got Carmelo Anthony. Uh, do you think Melo, I mean, obviously he's probably not the complete answer, but do you think he at least helps them in some sense? Uh, at this point, why not give it a shot? Uh, what was it? A couple of years ago, they were rumored to trade for him and they, uh, it would be a whole package to get him and all this and now it's just signing him off the street so <laughs> save some money save some assets doing it that way but I don't um, he's not a long term solution you're absolutely correct he was a guy that they thought might be able to come in and provide a boost off the bench thinking that they were already a great team and they just haven't been good to say the least um, so I think why not? Like, you can't really get worse than they are right now. Um, see, if it's it's uh, low risk high it's low risk high reward. If he sparks the bench or sparks the starting lineup, great. If he doesn't, then you can just cut ties. Yeah, I think um, like he even came on first take and said like all that stuff. Like, I'm cool with a bench role and stuff like that. I mean, we'll see how legitimate that is once he actually gets to playing. But if he is accepting of that bench role, like, I think he'll be really good for them. Because I don't think anyone ever questioned that Carmelo Anthony isn't an NBA player anymore in terms of talent. Because, I mean, even his last year, he averaged, like, what, 13 a game before the Rockets, like, got rid of him. Like, that's not bad at all. I know it was bad efficiency, but still, um, they just need somebody off the bench. And, I mean, he might play late in games as well because Anthony Tolliver has been playing horrible for them. Um I mean, I don't know if everyone knows that one meme where that guy's just, like, chucking the ball over his head, and he's, like, hitting, like, the top of the backboard. I literally put on Twitter, I'm like, I'm like Anthony Tolliver every time he gets the ball, and he's just, like, because it seems like I, don't, I haven't seen him make a shot, like, all year. Um, yeah, it's, it's been bad. It, it's, it's just been a bad situation for the Trailblazers. They have nothing going their way. Yeah. Um, now, I, I still believe in them, though, because, I mean, they've made the playoffs for the last six seasons. And uh, obviously a team that made the Western Conference Finals. It's very rare that you see them, like, completely hop out of the playoffs. I know that happened with the Phoenix Suns, but uh, looks like they're turning around. So, uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, at least try something to fix it. And who knows, maybe it'll work. Yep, you got to try it. You got to try it to see if it works. Uh, Now we're on to the final part of our daily picks. Um, Now, if you guys remember last week, we picked like all but one the same. Um, So we're both four of six at the moment. Um, The only uh, one we had different was the game right now between the Hawks and the Suns. I picked the Hawks and Johnny picked the Suns. The Suns are currently winning by six. So at this rate, I'm gonna be wrong, but it's whatever. Uh, Let's move on though to our next week games. Uh, so for today for you guys, but tomorrow for us, the Sacramento Kings playing the Lakers. Who do we got winning that? Lake show. Yeah, I also got the Lakers. Um, maybe I'll give the Kings more of a chance because they've looked pretty decent, although they have like injuries, uh, but also it's in Staples Center. So I'm going to go with the Lakers on that. Uh, Saturday, the Hornets against the Knicks. Who do we got? Hornets, Knicks. I'll take the... Well, it's two bad teams, but I'll take the team that doesn't have dysfunction uh, between the front office and the coaches, so I'll take the Hornets. Uh, yeah, I'm also going to take the Hornets on that one. 
Uh, Sunday, the Warriors against the Pelicans. Uh, I know the Pelicans have had injury issues lately. Uh, we already know the Warriors' injury issues, but who do we got? I'll take the Pels. I'm going to take the Warriors. I think that the Pelicans, they're going to be really depleted. Um, now, I know they still got like Drew Holiday and stuff, but I don't know. I feel like that's a game that the Warriors will be really motivated for. Um, Monday, we got the Timberwolves Jazz. Who do we got winning that? Let's take Utah. I'm also going to take the Jazz on that one. Uh, Tuesday, we got the Trailblazers and the Pelicans. Who's winning that? I think Portland will figure it out eventually. So I'll take that eventually right now and take the Blazers. Yeah, I'm also going to take the Blazers on that one. Um, Wednesday, we got the Magic against the Raptors. Who do we got winning that? Best team in the East. Toronto. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with the Magic, actually. Uh, considering the Magic are really close to beating them last time. And, I mean, the Raptors also have like, injury issues. And they proved last year in the playoffs they could beat them in Toronto. So, I'm going to go with the Magic on that one. Uh, and our, our last game on Thursday next week, the Trailblazers against the Bucks. So, who do we have winning that? I'll take Milwaukee. Yeah, I'm also going to take the Bucks. Uh, just because of what we've seen so far. Can't really pick the Blazers. Uh, unless they're playing a team like the Pelicans, I guess. <laughs> exactly um no offense pelicans fans but all right <laughs> i think that's gonna do it for episode five of our podcast johnny you got anything to say before we end it don't think so uh just gonna enjoy a weekend of hoops and be back at it next thursday that is right uh and then thanksgiving's coming up too in about two weeks so uh Unfortunately, it won't be any basketball, but it'll still be good grub. Huh. All right. Yes, um, sir. So we will catch you guys next week on episode six, and uh, we're out. Peace. Peace.